So, let's check this thing out real quick, and then uh, each of them, I'm just gonna play them as is, and then we will swap heads and tune them up. Like I said, I'm probably not gonna spend like 30, 40 minutes on each drum this time, so we'll uh, just swap heads, get them somewhere I like them, and then uh, move on for each one. So this is the guy we're starting with. I already did the bottom head on this one, but we got 12 millimeters of beach, and I'm excited to show you all the veneer inside this thing, because this thing sounds, sorry, looks ridiculous. I'm getting ahead of myself. It sounds ridiculous too, but I'm looking forward to seeing what that HD dry sounds like on top of this. I'm doing HD dries on all the ones that we were uh, messing with today. So, uh, I guess I should tell you what's on here first. We've got a prototype UV-1. So this is, I mean, it's almost exactly the same as a UV-1 head. I don't actually know specifically what's different about it, but this is uh, the prototype head that they sent out to a bunch of artists to just kind of test before they dropped UV-1 as a product. So, uh, let's hit this thing and then we will pull this head off and put a new one on there. That's what this thing sounds like. Let's pop this guy off and get rolling with a head swap. Guess I don't need plugs in during that. So these guys, we can't really use the uh, the drill for them because they've got old school, uh, what do they call it, snap lock. So running these real hard with a drill is uh, not super good. So that's the one thing that's kind of annoying about these SIG drums is that they're uh, <laughs> cumbersome to do this with. As you can see, it's going to take a little while uh, to do that up. I don't know if any of you noticed, but I did kind of change this kit up a little bit ago. You probably can't see too much through the phone, but I changed up all the cymbals. Well, not all the cymbals. A good chunk of the cymbals. And uh, changed my side snare. So I haven't had a 13 side snare in a long time. That's kind of fun. Uh, the uh, the old Artist Earth, it's got a ridiculously thick shell. You think 12 millimeters is thick? No. This is a 28 millimeter thick shell on the other side here. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Get you out of the way. Get these just kind of untensioned first. And each of the drums we're doing today has uh, 12 lugs per side. Kind of a weird thing Sonar was doing back in the, the 80s and slightly into the early 90s. Get on there. There we go. This one in particular is one of the oldest ones that I got. This uh, production date on this was in 1980, if I remember correctly. And the SIGs actually came out in 81. Oops. So these were uh, in the very first batch that launched the series, which is pretty cool. The kit that I have that matches this is kind of neat. It's pretty rare to see the SIG bass drums with a virgin shell, so without the actual like mount drilled into them. And uh, I've always been a big fan of that. I don't like mounts on my kicks. Just because A, I don't really use them because I pretty much am always in the studio here. Um, but I also just don't like how they look. I feel like there's no, no good reason to be covering up all that wood when you could just as easily use a different stand for your toms. That's just my opinion. I know lots of people like that mount. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's real nice having a drill. <laughs> How's everybody doing? It's uh, hard to stay on top of the chat with this because it's so small, but I will do my best when I see things popping in. All right, we're almost there. We got two more and then this is basically off. So close. Sometimes that snap lock just like holds on almost all the way up. It makes it kind of annoying. If you guys are unfamiliar, basically like each of these tension rods are shaved down. So if you notice there's like a 
a flat side. I don't know if you can really see that. So it goes from like full round to like a flattened side. And there's like a little kind of D-shaped, uh, I don't know what you call it, but there's a little D-shaped thing that locks onto it so that they don't really detune when you're playing them because it just kind of grabs them real tight. Which is like great for not detuning, not so great for uh, changing heads in a hurry. That's probably going to be the bit that takes the longest. Anyway. <clears throat> All right, we are almost there. Then we get to see inside this shell, which is exciting. This thing's very cool. See, got that neat like prototype head off there. That thing's pretty deep too. Oh man, I'm always blown away by this thing. Check out how rad this drum looks. It's kind of hard for me to see what we're looking at here, but yeah, this is, I don't know, it's, uh, it's weird. There's a couple of drums on this kit where the bubinga on the inside is prettier than the bubinga on the outside, which is like, this is not really a big deal, but still, hey you, why don't you stay up there? Okay. I guess I should make sure that bearing is doesn't have any dust or grit on it. <laughs> Old school internal muffler. Not my thing. It's cool, but I always keep it disengaged. Line up the logos. I think they did have like a, like a kind of ratchet key for these. That's not ratchet's not the right word, but like one of the ones where it's kind of meant to sort of speed turn them on. But I do not have any of those. It'd be nice to get my hands on a couple. If any of you sonar geeks are watching and you have a couple of those you wouldn't mind getting rid of, hit me up. I will totally buy a pair. You know, just gotta make sure you get the threading started before you start mashing them in there with a the key. This guy is a little tight. Sometimes that snap lock just grabs right away. Yeah, there we go. I don't think I've ever had quite this muffled of a head on this drum, so I'm very excited to hear what this sounds like. The head it came with, like from the original owner, was a an extremely beat up coated ambassador. And uh, that that UV1 prototype I just pulled off is, I mean, specs wise, essentially the same thing, which is like a 10 mil single ply. So for anybody that was here for the last bunch of them, same thing is gonna happen. I'm just gonna take it down to where it touches on each of these, crank it up, pull it back down, and then we tune her up and hopefully it sounds great. I guess I'm not going to be making that 15 minute thing because it's already been 10 minutes just getting this friggin' head on here. But uh, we will see. If it starts going crazy long, maybe we won't do all three. Uh, I might have been a little optimistic and thinking I could bang all those out in one live stream without it just getting too boring. But, uh, you know, we'll see. It, uh, it takes time to do this stuff, you know? Can't rush it if you want your drums to sound good. Mm -mm. Right One of the things about the snap lug is it's hard to kind of like tune by feel, which is one thing I enjoy about modern drums. Is you can really just like feel the amount of uh, resistance and pressure you're putting on each one. But with that snap lock, it adds its own resistance. So it's uh, harder to be sure about that. It's even hard to 100% tell exactly where they 
just make contact without without putting any actual tension on the head. I think we're basically there. Okay, cool, let's crank this thing up. where I started. Try it out. Hmm. All right. Hey, I'm only getting one side of you. There we go. Very dry. It's a lot drier than I expected. Still does sound pretty cool, but let's uh, let's back this off a little bit. Maybe not even too much though. I just want the drum to open up just a little. I feel like we might have just like taken it a little tight enough where it kind of just chokes out. It also might just be too much of a head for this. Like I said, I've only really heard 10 mil single plies on here. And uh, the HD dry is definitely thicker than that. And it's got muffle rings.
does sound pretty great. It's still like surprisingly dry. Like I honestly expected this drum to open up more. Well, that's, that's too loose. Too loose. That's better. Okay, let's uh, let's bring it down a little further. See what happens. Might just be a dry drum. That's entirely possible. Ooh, I like what that sounded like. A little too far on that. Cool. Let's try it. What do we got here? Oh, somebody just bought their first 14 by 8 sonar. Hold on a sec, it's this. Uh, man, that's cool. Did you get, uh, did you get one of the, the compressors? There's something weird going on with my headphones. I'm gonna just grab plugs and use those instead of these. But that is sounding pretty decent. Let's, uh, let's abort mission on this drum for the moment. I'm gonna change my ears over. Uh, we're gonna bring out the light. So, give me one second. So this drum is anything but light. <laughs> I suppose it's lighter than the previous one. Uh, but this guy right here is again 14 by eight, but this time it's birch instead of beech, and it is seven millimeters thick instead of 12. So let's hear it as is. Kind of like the previous one, I got a G1 to start. And uh, again, we're gonna be popping an HD dry on this thing. benefit from a little muffling, but whatever, we're popping this head off anyway, so who cares? Let's do it. Same thing as the previous one, we got snap locks, so bear with me, it's gonna take a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, 
to say the hardware is just like the one I'm using. Oh, sick, so it's like a, an old school one. Man, that's badass. I must have missed what you said you got. Uh, sorry for making you repeat yourself, but I was uh, a little occupied. You wanna tell me again? That is uh, very cool, man. I'm pumped that you got your first 14 by eight. Man, I love these things. These SIG 14 by eights are dope. I got, uh, I got five of them. I guess let's get all that tension off before I start really going to town on these. Seems like something routed silly. It looks like everything is recording properly, which is the important part. I'm both recording and recording a backup this time, because as, uh, as we found when I did the unboxing of the HLDs, my archaic recording computer decided to poop the bed a little bit. <laughs> so now I'm making it do double duty. Yeah, that's everything. Beat Chaser, how's it going, man? All right, we are halfway there. The bane of Snaplock. <laughs> uh, mm, mm. Oh, he said he already confessed to everybody here. He can't lie. There's always sonar hardware on a copper, a copper shell and cast copper hoops. Cast copper hoops? Are you kidding me? That sounds dope as shit, man. You gotta DM me some pictures of that and video if you got it. I wanna see that thing. That sounds very, very cool. Who did you get to make the shell and the hoops? And where'd you get the hardware? <laughs> did you find like a broken drum or something and just scavenged uh, the pieces off it? Very, very cool. Uh, I know a few guys that have scavenged SIG hardware for different drums. Um, I mean, Robin Stone didn't do this himself. He got it from a friend of ours who passed away, unfortunately, but he has a 12 millimeter thick cast bronze snare drum using black 12 lug SIG hardware. It's uh, ridiculous. I think he said that drum was almost 70 pounds or something insane like that. Crazy. Those uh, cast bronze ones I have on the other side of the room, the heaviest one of those is only 30. <clears throat> Sweet, Beat Chaser, you're very welcome, man. I'm uh, uh, pumped that you've been enjoying it and watching it, man. I yeah, appreciate it. You're, you guys are <laughs> why I bother posting stuff, so thank you for hanging out, you know? All right, let's get all these things off here. It will be nice to put a new head on this thing. It's been a little while. This is another rando head, uh, like an Evans kind of, not a prototype, but a one-off. When they came up with the, uh, I guess they were calling it the 56, the calf tone, they, uh, they did a, a limited run again, I think just for artists, that had uh, this cool sort of like 50s-ish logo on it. But it's just a G1, there's nothing different about this than a normal G1. Where does I put that other one? Still in pretty decent condition. I'll probably hang on to that for another day. But yeah, here, check this guy out. So yeah, similar kind of thing. It's a ebony drum and the inside veneers are kind of prettier than the outside veneers. Damn it, Sonar, we want to see these things. Man, the 16 inch floor tom from my SIG Heavy Kit, the inside veneer is one of the craziest looking Babinga veneers I've ever seen. It's so insane looking. All right, let me just make sure that is still going on Wirecast. Sweet. Yeah, we're good. Okay, grab your head for this guy. Thanks again, Larry. I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, I definitely appreciate the, the hookups, my friend. These are gonna go a long way, and I can't wait to start doing some comparison videos. I'm sorry, it's been taking me forever to uh, set these up. I kinda wanted to live stream each of them just in case anybody was interested. So, let's get this thing on here. Oh, yeah, these old hella hoops don't quite fit that guy. That'll be fine once we get him on. Okay. Mark Drummer in the chat says, beautiful. Yeah, man, this was, uh, this was my first SIG 
Uh, I got this way back in the day. I kind of, my first one that I wanted was one of those heavy Bubinga ones. It's like, you know, the thing that I'd kind of lost that for. This is the first one that I saw back when I was getting obsessive about just buying every cool sonar drum I could find. And uh, yeah, I've had this thing forever. I've probably had this drum definitely more than a decade. I don't know by how much, but yeah, long time. It's a very cool thing. And kind of like the previous one, I am excited to hear it with a heavier, heavier batter head on here. Yeah, how are we doing for time here? Holy shit, we've already been half an hour. We might cap this at two, just because I don't want to. I don't want to make this take an hour. <laughs> I mean, I will if everybody wants to hang out. But uh, yeah, I don't want everybody just getting bored sitting here and me just watching me tune drums. <laughs> Especially with this snap lock stuff, makes it take forever. I'm kind of glad that they uh, they updated this. For a while they had external tune safe, which I just got a shipment of Germany from uh, 40 more of those pieces. And then on modern drums, like you see on my kit here, there's nothing weird on the outside. It's all on the inside of the lug. There's uh, heavier fittings in there that basically hug onto the tension rods similarly, uh, but you can still use, a, still use a drill safely on those things, which is definitely nice. I mean, I could probably get away with it on these, but I just feel like it's just asking to damage the snap locks. And I mean, good luck finding those pieces at this point. They haven't made these drums in decades. Man, they haven't made these drums in over a quarter century because it's been like, I guess since the, I don't know when they stopped making SIGs, somewhere in the 90s. I don't know, if anybody knows in the chat, pop up and let me know. All right, we are almost there. This is the last one. Cool. All right, so same as last time, let's pitch it all the way up. Well, maybe not crazy up, but let's just pitch it up. See how it sounds, and then probably pull it down a little bit because I'm going to start too high. Gonna be like that other one where if I tune it up, it's not gonna like it so much. Yeah, this one because that hoop kind of fit on it a little snug. I'm probably gonna need to go a little too high before it gets anywhere I like it. Just to kind of seat it to this thing. Yeah, this is gonna be way too high for this drum, but that's fine too, at least for a moment. Pretty close. All right, let's try it. This is gonna be way too high for sure. sounding. Obviously way, way too high, but kind of neat as an effect. It's so punchy. <laughs> All right, let's pull this back fairly significantly. Yeah, that'll probably get us somewhere we like. Or closer anyway. <laughs> see, uh, sorry, I can't see what your name is, but not too high for one of the people in the chat. It's uh, also possible the, the phone is uh, 
Not accurately representing what's going on in the room here. It's a, no, I don't want that up more. Damn. Sounds kind of cool. Let's ear up. Still just a little dry, it feels choked to me. So let's tune it down just a little further. Maybe let's pull this all the way off, start from scratch. Cool, okay, so let's tune this up a little. But just a little. Ah, the hell's it doing? Cool. This might sound good. Let's check that out. Hmm. Probably a little too low. Let's kind of muffle that up. See what that sounds like. It's kind of 70s. It's a little gross though. Let's tune it up just a little further.
Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's pop one of these on there. I'm digging. Yeah, all right. I can live with that. I can live with that for now. All right, so what do y'all think? Should we call it quits or should we get the Pharaoh out? There's uh, one more of these, not including the bronze. I'm gonna do it, who cares? Gets it over with. If you don't wanna hang out, you don't wanna hang out. You don't have to. Okay, so give me one sec. Drum it, so this is gonna be kind of fun. Let's check it out and then uh, pop a new head on there. Uh. Well, that sounds great. I'm almost sad I'm gonna change the head. But, let's do it. Uh, Beat Chaser, who are my sponsors? Oh man, there's lots. Uh, basically everything that you see here is sponsored. Uh, Sonar, Sabian, uh, we got Evans, Dario, Vader, Lowboy Beaters, Sledge Pads, Sim Pad, uh, sweet spot clutches, big fat snare drum. What else is there? Drum dots, snare weight. Is that it? Nope, it sure isn't. There's Porter and Davies. There's a uh, protection racket. That might be it. <laughs> a lot. Anyway, basically anything that's in here uh, is through some sort of sponsorship. I mean, not everything, I guess, but all the stuff that I use pretty much all the time, yeah. this. <laughs> I was looking at Sonar's new site and I, I noticed that my bio and picture are from like 15 years ago. So I'm going to need to update those. Uh, <laughs> that's a long time. Yeah, it's going to be my, my 16th anniversary with those guys uh, coming up in July. We got another big milestone, Vader, 15 years in August. I just had my 10 years with Sabian, and you guys might have seen that post. 
That was kind of cool. That one doesn't feel like it's been a decade yet. That's crazy. I think that's it. I can't think of any more. They're official anyway. I mean, I guess, I guess S hoops. Well, I guess it's kind of through a distributor thing. That doesn't count. The guy that makes S hoops is no longer part of the company. He apparently got kind of pushed out in a slightly not cool way. I think he passed away actually. I remember, I think it was his wife reached out to me when I was, started posting videos about him. Yeah, actually, lots of people ask about those. S hoops are these hoops that are in these toms where it's basically a triple flange tube, but it flanges in over the bearing edge versus flanging out like a traditional triple flange does. And on sonar drums, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but their shells are all undersized, which means they are slightly smaller than you would expect for like a 10 inch drum, right? Um, but the cool thing about that is, well, Almost the scary thing about that, like I'm pretty accurate, but at the same time, it's like the fact that it's possible to hit a bearing edge, uh, it just like really bugged me. So <laughs> getting S hoops on here made me feel like I could shred around in these kits without having to worry so much. Like one accidental, you know, stick that's a little off center and all of a sudden you got a fucking bearing edge repair you got to do, which is not fun, especially on drums that are like a thousand dollars for an eight inch Tom, you know? Tension rods out of here. Okay. Whew, this hoop is filthy. All right, just probably clean that up. Same thing as that last one where this was uh, kind of stuck in there. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. This is uh, <laughs> a lot more fun with people than just doing it by myself. Man, this is a cool drum. For those of you that aren't familiar with the ferromanganese steel stuff, it's a uh, very, very, very cool material. I find that it's kind of like, it, like, it's got the balls of steel, but it's got a, kind of the pop of aluminum, which is just a really cool combination. They're just, I don't know, man, they're, they're special. I was never a really like piccolo snare guy until I got my, my designer 14 by four and a quarter ferro manganese. That drum just sounds unfriggin' believable. It's so nice. It's one of the favorite drums in my collection. I know I say that about most of these things, but really this time. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Chewy talking about the strainers on these things. The throw off mechanism on these drums are crazy. Like as he was pointing out, it kind of, it goes fully through the shell. There we go. Uh, the whole mechanism moves in parallel. Yeah, with these undersized shells, these uh, these Evans heads fit real tight in those hoops. But get in there. So greasy. Should have bought some wet wipes over here. Yeah, you All right. So. Oh yeah, he's asking, do I wipe the edges? Usually. I think I forgot on this last one a second ago, but it was looking pretty clean, so it doesn't really make a difference. The the bottom one usually gets more of a wipe for me because then we have like uh, like wood chippings and stuff that usually kind of sits down there. Yeah. 
Snap lock makes this take so long. <laughs> That's kind of the main downside to these things. It's just tedious to get these on and off. But it's worth it. They're cool drums. Very, very cool drums. Interesting pieces of history. All right, we're almost there. Almost there. Four and a half to go. There we go. Yeah, J Cream in the chat. Uh, it's an HD dry. I'm putting HD dries on basically all the ones that I'm going to do comparison videos with since those bronze things showed up. So, like, all the SIGs are getting HD dries. And uh, yeah, the only one that's not getting an HD dry is that 15 inch Tempest Bell Bronze. It was just because they don't make an HD dry in there. And my guy that was uh, in charge of the custom shop over at Evans uh, no longer works at Evans. So I, uh, yeah, I gotta make a new friend over there. <laughs> okay, this is basically all hugged up. Not quite, there we go. All right, let's do this. This is probably way too hot, but let's uh, see what it sounds like and go from there. Yeah, it says the Tempest is a 15 by six and a half, that, uh, this guy right there. likes being higher more so than the other ones do uh, but I actually liked it better before we started this so let's turn it back down a little bit where did those go that heavyweight actually sounded killer on this thing it's entirely possible that when we're done these comparison videos that guy's coming back on honestly I don't want to change the heads on either of my 590s it's kind of why I'm putting them off to the end because they both just sound amazing right now uh, <laughs> they're definitely gonna get matched up to HD dry so that we can have those comparison videos where everything's basically the same. But uh, yeah, there's some real magic on how those are currently.
cool. Where did I put those things? Ooh, that sounds kind of great. You know, I could totally live with that. All right. Can I? Yeah, I could probably use a little tweak, but that's actually pretty good. It's good enough for now anyway. So this has been going on for, yeah, basically an hour. So yeah, we're gonna call it here. Uh, so let's just see if anybody's got any questions. Let's uh, roll with that. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, this has been three of my 14 by eight sonar signature snare drums. Uh, oh, we got a question in here from Chewy. He says, uh, who was I with before Sabian? I was with a company called Hammerax. And honestly, the only reason that I left is that they stopped making the really unique stuff. In fact, let me show you some of that just cause, uh, let's like pop, pop this up. Hammerax made really weird shit. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff in front of Hammerax. This is a Hammerax thing. Really weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 36 inch boomy wang. Uh, but that gets very eclipsed by my 48 inch boomy wang. This, this thing. <laughs> Wacky stuff. Yeah, Hammer Axe. Uh, Hammer Axe was a very cool company. They, uh, they changed alloys and they changed their kind of business model and things just kind of fell apart from there. I don't even know if they're still doing stuff. I emailed the dude that ran the company a couple of years back, but I never heard back. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Chewy Chicken says, Super Mario used to use those. You know, if he was using those, he'd probably use the little one. Check this out. I got a 12. This thing's pretty cool. So. <laughs> That's actually my text tone. Anyway, this has been fun, everybody. Thanks all for hanging out. I know this was a long one. This took a whole hour. I, uh, yeah, when I do the studio versions of these ones, it's definitely going to have to get cut up. Nobody's going to want to sit through all that. So uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. This has been a pile of fun. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you around the Drum Geek interwebs. Later.